Privacy is a fundamental human right. So often the media crosses the line and shines a light into areas of our lives when it shouldn't. The arguments that the editors offer are about as concrete as the papers they produce. Whether it's the recent threesome case, or well, my case back in 2008, they have absolutely no basis on which to publish anything. When I appeared in front of a parliamentary committee in 2009, the assumption seemed to be that because I was known, I was fair game and they could publish anything they liked. You suggested that you got a phone call out of the blue at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning saying, have you seen the news world? And you were horror struck when you discovered what it had said. You also said that you had been attending parties of the kind for 45 years. You're a public figure. You know the British press. You know the appetite of the British press for stories of this kind. Had you not always felt that this was a time bomb that sooner or later was going to go on? I have to confess I didn't. As Prince Harry said the other day, everyone's entitled to a private life. And the media have destroyed their own defence by crossing the line into areas of no public interest so many times. And ironically, when the newspapers themselves have something to lose by exposing John Whittingdale's relationship, they chickened out. That's why I believe injunctions still do have a valuable role to play in maintaining privacy. Once something is published, no judge on earth can make it private again. An injunction is the only safeguard. Of course there are problems with the internet because it is all over the world. But the technology companies must take responsibility for protecting privacy in cases where it should be protected. There are cases of hypocrisy, of misleading the public, which must be exposed. I accept that. But exposing people's private lives for no better reason than increasing circulation is completely unacceptable. Thank you.